Hello, welcome to this very special edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace, reporting from the Schomburg here in Harlem, New York. Tonight, Real Sisters is presenting their 19th annual award ceremony. And for the last 20 years, Real Sister has paid homage as well as paid respect to the trailblazers of the industry of television as well as film. Tonight's honorees are the legendary Miss Kathy Hughes, the founder of TV One and Radio One, as well as actress Natari Naughton of the show Power. Tonight you're going to see highlights of tonight's ceremonies, as well as some of my interviews with some of the founders of Real Sisters, as well as African Voices, Miss Catherine Butts, as well as you're going to see reflections of how people in the industry are here to pay their respects to not only Miss Hughes, but people of color in the industry. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the highlights of this year's 2016 Real Sisters Award Ceremony live here at the Schomburg as part of the Pace Report here in Harlem, New York. Natari, you are wonderful. Kathy Hughes, you're phenomenal. You guys have been a personal inspiration um, to me and to all the people in this room. And I just wanted to say what you said about integrity, bringing people along, that is precisely what Real Sisters have, has been doing for 19 years. <laughs> Next year we celebrate 20, and for African Voices Magazine, 25 years. Of um, just producing and presenting amazing stories in our community. And I want to just thank, if you want something done, get Lisa Durden. going to help introduce tonight who helped put this together. This is our first red carpet, so I want to thank you for your patience. Y'all look good. Yeah, and I want to thank Terry Williams. She's been a supporter from the start. Nana Camille Yarbrough. April Silver. Image Nation. No one is a, uh, does this alone. You have an amazing group of people supporting you, and that's how we grow and will continue to grow. Thank you. Carolyn, thank you for allowing me to come out. This is a very, very important event, and I want everybody to know about how important and why this was your passion and why you started this? Um, in terms of Real Sisters Film Festivals, because we didn't have outlets for women of color, and also that the opportunities in Hollywood, like we get 1%, less than 1% of directing jobs. So I said that Real Sisters is an outlet to showcase our films, to just open the doors for women of color in the film industry. You also are the founding you're the, the, you're the mother of African Voices magazine yeah. also. You have really done a very, very important part of getting people's, people of color's voice out there, both on the film side as well as on the literary side. Tell people how people can get involved with getting their work submitted to you, as well as getting involved with African Voices. Okay. If you're interested in writing for the magazine, or, you know, volunteering for Real Sisters, they can go to AfricanVoices.com or realsisters.org and I just wanted to say I was really inspired so much by the work of Kathy Hughes when I first started African Voices because I wanted to start with the writers and the visual artists but also have a broadcast presence and what she was doing with 
Radio 1 really just inspired me as a woman and it touched me. And so that is why she's our honoree tonight, because she's opened so many doors. And we just wanted to celebrate her. You know, uh, when women talk about we need to stick together, a lot of women talk about that. But Carolyn does that. Clap for Carolyn. I'm not saying this because, because we hired you. <laughs> when, when, uh, but I will it for the check. Uh, it happens to be true. Um, when Carolyn called me, she called me looking for someone to curate the film festival. She called Ring Ring. Oh, you, oh, ring, ring, this is my phone. Lisa, <laughs> so, I know you produce Soul Food Junkies, and you were supposed to produce on Brick City, the Diary series. I know you know a whole lot of producers and filmmakers. I'm looking for a curator. Do you know anybody? I'm sitting here like, I'm the one. <laughs> but I didn't want to be too aggressive. And she's talking and talking. Now, I'm good. I'm like, I'm for some people, but I'm really the one. She kept talking, talking, then she went in circles. Well, well, I would ask you if I thought you had time. I said, if you got time, I got time. <laughs> and that's exactly how I got hired. So thank you for hiring me to be the curator. And then she allowed me to produce the award ceremony here in Harlem with her. Clap for that. It's an honor to just be standing in your presence. Oh, thank, you. thank you so much. Tell the viewers why this is a very important event for not just women of color, but also people who are in the industry. Real Sisters of the Diaspora, this is their award show. It's, for me, it's important to support people that are supporting other people. Real Sisters of the Diaspora gives women of color, people of color, an opportunity to tell their stories in a very unique, supported way fertilizing, I call it. It's, a very, it's an incubation of love and support. So for me tonight, Kathy Hughes, you can't get bigger, better than Kathy Hughes in terms of, I remember her being in the, in the radio, in the window, you know, and being one of those people in, that went to D.C. and it was across the mic. And to see her evolve and grow, I had to be here to support that and to support her. Terry Williams, an amazing sister that's been the, you know, every artist has to have a team. Publicist is one of those most important parts elements of the team and Terry Williams has been the force of the that behind a lot of big names that we've seen but a, behind movements. Uh, Black Pain, her book about mental illness is one of the go-to yeah. books you yeah. know so it, to me it's a holistic celebration and Carolyn Butts having had African voices and I was one of the people that was blessed to receive the Ellie Charles for my contribution to society and arts and so those people that support those people, I'm here to support them and be that love, you know, giving it back. Getting out of line at customer service. Oh my God, Kim Coles, what are you doing here? I'm like, saving money just like you. I'm like, this. <laughs> <laughs> it's becomes a thing. People are, it's just a, a big commotion and, and this customer service can't keep things together. The security cameras turn around and they're looking at me and I go, this is terrible. I gotta get out of here. <laughs> now, you know how, like, most mothers, can feel the energy of their children at all times. Yeah. Like I know that there's a mother here tonight who, if your child sneezed in, in East Orange, New Jersey, you look at my baby has a cold. I'm like, hey, that's a great girl, some night girl. Not my mother, she's in there communing with the housekeeping department. She can't feel nothing. So I'm trying to call to her like, yes, I'm just here visiting my mother. Yes, no, I'm just shopping. Yes, I am sick clear, you can take a picture. No, my mother, is, I'm trying to send her a message, but she's getting nothing. All of a sudden, she finally gets it. She comes out the bathroom. What's all this commotion out here? All of the Walmart employees leave me and rush over to my mother. Oh my God, Miss Ernie! 
are the mistress of ceremonies this evening, and we're honoring a very important lady, Miss Kathy Hughes. Yes. And you know, you are a trendsetter as well as a woman of color in this industry. Tell the viewers why Miss Hughes is very important to this community and the world. Well, anytime you have a woman of power, a woman of means, means is all in here, uh, who has created opportunity, created opportunity for herself and opportunities for others, that she should be honored. She should be lifted up. She should be lauded. She should get as many awards as she possibly can be, as, as, and that we can possibly give her because she's a trailblazer and she has, like I said, created something for herself and created opportunities for others. And so I think it's time for her to start getting her her awards now. I think you know you, you've heard this before. We always give people their flowers after they're gone. Let's give her her flowers right here, right now. I've had a, had the opportunity to work for TV One. Hey, Kathy, I would love to work for TV One some more. I just think that she's created this wonderful space for quality programming to live, and that's a good thing. Tell everybody about your webcast. Ah, about my, uh, you mean my YouTube yes. series? Yes. So Eric Alexander, who played Crazy Max on Living Single, and I are BFFs in real life. And so we created something called the BFF Chronicles. And it's a series of a few five-minute short YouTube videos of us just being us. And because we're in the festival, now we're going to have to do a second season. Because we just did it because we wanted to spend time with each other. Um, I happen to have a YouTube channel. YouTube lets you shoot for free if you have a certain number of subscribers. We made it happen. And it was really, that's an example of um, making use of the, of the resources that you have. Do you know that at YouTube, if you have a certain number of followers, you can go and shoot at the YouTube facility for free. They give you the top of the line equipment, top of the line lighting, cameras, everything. You just have to bring in your crew. You have to, you know, go through the process. But this is an example of saying, rather than waiting for opportunity to come to me, why can't I create something for, for myself? And we did it. And we had a whole lot of fun and get ready for season two. So many beautiful sisters, and thank you for including me in this community, real sisters. Thank you for having me. I will continue to hold the torch with pride and dignity, and I am so blessed and honored to be here tonight. Thank you so much. We have some proclamations that I want to make sure uh, we read. We're at Jemima D. Williams, Council Member of the 45th District, and Laurie Combo, Council Member of the 34th District, are proud to join guests of the 2016 Real Sisters Film Festival in honoring Natori Nolan for her outstanding achievements as both as a singer, an actress, and we're at the Real Sisters Film Festival founded in 1997. It's real long, so I'm going to jump down a little bit. We're at born and raised in East Orange, New Jersey, Ms. Nolan was really inspired by Wendy Houston as a child, and knew by the age of five that she too wanted to be a singer and an actress. She believed in her faith, tenacity, and fearlessness will give her longevity in her career, and she was consistently proven in all of her work. And whereas before I transitioned into film, Ms. Norm was a member of the platinum selling pop trio, 3LW. Yeah. Today, she is best known for her performance in Lil' Kim, and Fox has hit the film Notorious, and a role in MGM's remake of the classic film, Fame. She also starred in many previous projects, including lottery ticket opposite Loretta Devine, Ice Cube, Mike Epps, and Bow Wow on TV. She is known for memorable guest performances on Mad Men, and it's always sunny in Philadelphia, and a rose in her playboy club, and a client list goes on and on. Where we have Norton currently stars opposite Omari Hardwick in Power, the star's network number one hit series, now its third season created by Powerhouse producer, writer Courtney Cameron, executive producer of 50 Cent. She had truly enriched us all of her work, and we wish her. So last year, I tried to jump too far, and somebody jumped out and told me, hell no. So I want to make sure I read everything I can. Be it known that we, the unassigned council members, are honored and brother and Tori Norton upon receiving the Real Sisters Film Festival's Trail Blazer Award for our standing contributions uplifting black film and culture in America. Jemima Williams, Councilman, and Lord Kim. Power is an amazing show. The writing and the characters, the, and the characters are so very multifaceted. What was it like when you got the script and you read it to the part for Tasha? Ooh, when I saw the script for Power, I was so excited, and I knew that I knew that it had that gritty, real, you know, New York flavor that I thought made it special, like The Wire, Sopranos. It reminded me of something, but it was also original and unique. 
Um, I love Tasha. I loved Ghost. I love the dynamic of the two of them. So I was excited to play this strong, fierce, sexy woman. Tonight we're honoring Miss Kathy Hughes, and she's a very important visionary. You being an actress, what are some of the things that you tell young sisters that are getting in the game who want to pursue this as a career? I would tell all the young people, sisters and brothers, to, if you are pursuing this, to, you know, remember who you are when you get into this business because it can kind of change you and try to taint your real self because it's a tough business. And be ready for rejection. It's not going to come easy. So I would encourage them just to stay on the grind, study your work, be focused, um, all of that because this business can eat you up and spit you out. So just stay grounded. Tonight you're performing for the legendary Kathy Hughes and we're acknowledging a woman who really is a visionary in this industry for both television, radio and online. Amazing. Amazing woman. You know, I met her several times and I mean being in her presence you feel like you're in the presence of a genius. Yeah. Because everyone can't do what she did. I mean, she owns mostly all the radio stations that we hear across the country. TV One is one of the number one black networks in the country. And it's just amazing to have someone like that during our era. Yes. And they played a lot of your records in D.C. Oh, they do. They do. I love D.C. We're coming to D.C. I'm doing a, a, a tour of the Sisters Experience, and I'm coming to D.C. Yes. Miss Kathy Hughes has blazed her own trail, and I'm sure she's seen her own struggle. She took one radio station and created an empire. Yeah. And what she has done in the community, through television, through radio, has not only impacted us indirectly, but also directly. Everybody in this room, in some way, shape, or form, has been impacted by Ms. Kathy Hughes. There are a few similarities between Hattie and Kathy. Hattie was born in Wichita, Kansas, the Midwest. Kathy was born in Omaha, Nebraska, I believe. Also the Midwest, 300 miles apart. Now, Kathy was, I believe, a lecturer at Howard University for the School of Communications and became a general manager and brought lots of great things to WHURFM at Howard University. The connection is, when Hattie passed away, she left her Academy Award to Howard University. Another connection. The third connection, Kathy Hughes has had an indelible, long-reaching effect in the world of radio, and Hattie McDaniel was the first major black star in radio. So we're kind of connected. <laughs> Miss Hughes, I'm humbled to be here. There were people that made sure I was here today. Carolyn Butts, Real Sisters and African Voices. My film team and great friends in California. Dara Hill Fullerton, Paul Hartel, my film editor who worked on this video last minute. Great job by Paul. Dr. Delana Mogadima from Canada, who's working in lots of areas of diversity. And also Lloyd Clayton of the Manny Clayton Museum in Culver, Cal Culver City, California. So, Miss Hughes, your legacy is intact, but you're not through. There's more to do, there's more for all of us to do. And although I'm not a real sister, <laughs> I do support you. Thank you very much. I'm on the advisory board of the Real Sisters, and I'm also a member of the Tall Mega Chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. And for those of you who are not familiar with our organization, it's the first African-American sorority that was founded in 1908 on the campus of Howard University. And I'm also a proud graduate of Howard University, and I didn't hear it mentioned tonight, but Kathy Hughes is being 
The Howard University School of Communications is being named after Kathy Harris. the president of the Tall Mega Chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated to present Kathy Hughes with a special recognition. We would like to honor you for your outstanding achievement in media and exceptional contributions towards the advancement of women in television and arts. So we present to you the certificate of recognition today. Uh, we have another gift for her. Here I'm wearing a shawl. And the reason this is important, one, it, it, it has the colors of our sorority pink and green, but it's also a product by Unique Afrique, who's um, the owner of that is Alice Deer, and she's a member of Tall Mega Chapter. Now her company imports products made by women, of, made by women in Africa. And this scarf that, uh, that, that dons our pink and green was handwoven by women from Madagascar. So when we wear it, we not only show our, pri our pride in our organization, but we also support women um, in economic um, empowerment. So in this box, we'd like to present to you a silk woven scarf. Thank you. And thank God for allowing us the health the presence of mind to come tonight to celebrate with Sister Carolyn and Sister Lisa to your board of directors of Real Sisters for this exciting kickoff to the 19 Real Sisters Festival. Slide the family stone said it best when they said everybody is a star. You have your own fingerprints, your own unique aura, and for that I am grateful because there are about 7 billion people, give or take, on this planet. But I am blessed to call one of them my sister from another mother. I met Kathy when I was 19 at WHUR 96.3 at WHUR. I must say that I'm thrilled to be here at the Schomburg because I grew up in Harlem. I grew up on 135th Street in Riverton. I went to City College, right up the street. So it's great to come home and to present to this amazing woman. But I want to take a moment to say congratulations, Natori, because I remember when you were a young teenage girl and we worked together many, many years ago. So congratulations to you and to your parents on your trailblazer award. I know Kathy who can cook. Kathy who can catch fish. She's a fisherwoman. I know the woman who is... I'm sorry, the proper term is angler. I've just been corrected, as I, as I usually am throughout the day. I know the woman who is thoughtful, considerate, determined, courageous. And when I say that, in the beginning of her career, when she started her vision and dream to establish a radio station ownership, and eventually a network, and to hire African-American men and women. I was there in the beginning and observed the vision and the dream. And when she got the no's, the consistent no's from banks when she was trying to raise the money to buy her first radio station, WOL, she was not deterred. She turned the no's eventually into a yes. And all these years later, over 35 years later, we are celebrating not only Radio One, but the TV One Network, as you saw in the video. Interactive One, anything with the one it is. Kathy and her partner, who happens to be her son, Alfred Liggins, are not done yet. There is more to come. So it's so fitting that she is receiving an award from a woman who also was a pioneer, as we just saw in that other video. She is a remarkable individual, ladies and gentlemen. I cannot articulate, there are not enough words to express the wonder, the grandeur, that is my sister, my best friend, and tonight's honoree of the Hattie McDaniel Award. Real sisters, thank you so much for bestowing this privilege, this honor, 
on this remarkable woman. Ladies and gentlemen, happy Venus. A true American entrepreneur success to inspire us all, ladies and gentlemen. Happy Venus. So I was 10 years old and I got beat up every morning because there were six of us living in the projects and I would go in the bathroom, six in a house with one bathroom, I'd lock the door and do a morning show. I was practicing to be on the radio and I didn't care how much trouble. My toothbrush was my microphone and I was not coming out till my show was over. You can't disappoint your audience. And my brothers would attack me, I would get punished, I'd get cursed out. It did not matter. I continued doing my radio show because I had a goal. And Kevin, what you didn't know is the number one connection between me and your great aunt. I had the goal of becoming the first black woman with a nationally syndicated radio show. I was 42 years old before I found out Hattie McDaniels had already done that. Excuse me, uh, but Harry <laughs> already did that, so I had to find some other things to do because Kevin's great aunt had already occupied that space. I have to honestly say I am just so, 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 so honored. Carolyn and Lisa, you got the real name because it also could be spelled R-E-A-L. You all are really real sisters in this organization. This program not only is so, so rewarding and inspirational and gratifying for me and the Tory, we're having fun. <laughs> you really don't go to these type of things and have fun. Kim Coles, oh my God. That's her about her mama. You see, I love the mama stories because I'm a mama and a dad. Girl. The entertainment, Melissa, Nicole, all of them, just everyone, the volunteers, real sisters. So now I'm a real sister because I just wrapped and put in the can my first movie. chair and get my name on it. <laughs> but uh, the name of the movie is Media. It's about black owned and operated media companies. We have existed since Frederick Douglass and Ida B. Wells. There would have been no liberation had it not been for black media. It's a unifying force, it's an informational force, it's a motivational force, but more importantly than anything else, it's the only vehicle that we have that can tell our story from our perspective and get it right. Be different, Kevin, between your great I have 90 films or 300 films. Somewhere along the line, they dropped a couple hundred on the curb. But it's not other cultures' responsibility to tell our story. It's our responsibility to tell our story from our perspective. Susan Taylor knows she led that parade. So important for us to understand just who we really are. I was uh, sharing with Lisa when she interviewed me earlier 
that I'm always talking about. My mother's father, Dr. Lawrence C. Jones, who founded a school called the Piney Woods Country Life School in Piney Woods, Mississippi. 110 years old now. And uh, <laughs> recently I found out, I'm thinking my granddaddy is this great pioneer starting this school in Mississippi. I found out that his grandfather in 1844 founded the first integrated school in the United States of America in Woodstock, Michigan. Now, if I pay millions of dollars a year for research and I don't know who I am, I know that we got a lot of homework to do for us to really identify and embrace who we really are. So important. And media, is the easiest way for us to do that. Thank God for technology. Yes. Thank God for technology because it empowers us to be able, no matter what else we're doing, to explore the world and to embrace the greatness of who we really are as a people. Two quick plugs. Um, October 23rd is going to be such a significant day in my life because that's when Howard will officially name their School of Communications in my honor. So so Howard Green, they nurtured me, they prepared me. And when they gave me an honorary doctorate a few years ago, they told me that I was their most accomplished graduate. And that really didn't sink in. I think it's going to sink in when they pull that drink back and it says, hey, I mean, he's up like, wow, thank God, thank God, thank God. But leading up to that, the commercial that uh, I need to plug is that um, next week, and you all can um, pick it up on the internet, next week, WOL, my first station where I hosted the morning show for 11 years, we're going to do 20 hours of my old shows have been reproduced and they're going to air on WOL. You can, uh, we're going to be streaming them. But also, TV One, on Tuesday night, I'm going to do a sit-down chat with Roland Martin. He didn't think it was funny, but I said to Roland that it'll be the first time that a guest ever got to talk more on the show than he did. <laughs> he didn't think that was funny. I thought it was cute. But Roland and I talked for an hour on Tuesday night and then Wednesday morning after News One Now. We have been able to do in television, thank God, thank God, thank God, what we were able to do in radio, which is provide information that you're not going to get anywhere else. We're going to tell you how many black folks are getting killed every single solitary day by those who are being paid to protect us. We're going to tell you that during the real estate bubble of 2007, 8, and 9, 53% of all black wealth disappeared. And that it's going to take two generations to get us back to where we were. We're going to tell you what's going on. We're going to be like the real sisters. We're going to do what we're supposed to do in terms of keeping it real for our community. So, with that, I will thank you once again. Real Sisters, you are absolutely, positively incredible. And I think probably Victoria and I will come back even on the years we not being honored because this is so much fun. <laughs> Ms. Hughes, it's just an honor and a privilege to welcome you to Harlem and congratulations on this award. You have been a pioneer for quite a while now. Tell the people out here the visionary aspects of putting all of this together because now you've embraced the digital, radio, as well as television divide. Well, we try to keep current with our listeners, our viewers, our uh, internet users. 
but it didn't have to do with vision. It had to do with being obedient and hearing the voice of God and going in the direction of being of service to our people, to our community, and we get rewarded for that. Tell people about the trials and tribulations of running briefly. How you doing it now? Because now streaming is now the big thing now, and you've had to really switch into that right now. Yeah, well, you have to keep up with what the latest technology is making possible. If not, you'll get left behind. Each generation that's born is more advanced than the generation before them. And so you just have to keep current. But I don't see it as obstacles or challenges. I see it as opportunities to learn, to grow, but most importantly, as I said, to be of service to your community. TV One has been on the front lines of putting quality programming for people of color. Do we still have some a decade now? What are some of the things that you have coming out for people to pay attention to this fall? Oh, thank you for asking. I just completed producing my first movie. Congratulations. Yes, it comes on during Black History Month, February 25th, and it's called Media. And it's about black owned media. That'll do it again for this year's 2016 Real Sisters Awards here at the Schomburg here in Harlem, New York. I'd like to personally congratulate Ms. Kathy Hughes as well as Natavi Norton for their accomplishments, as well as Ms. Coles, as well as I'd like to personally thank Ms. Carolyn Butts for putting on a fantastic, fantastic award ceremony.